Sup dogs and welcome to a game called Tiny Bunny. It's a game I found on Steam. It released a couple days ago actually, last week. And I thought it looked really really cool so I thought I'd give it a shot. Also very recently I watched an anime called Beastars on Netflix. And this kind of reminded me a little bit of it. I have no idea what it's about. As I just know that it is a visual novel that's apparently for Mobo. <laughs> By the way, Beastars, really cool anime. My friend recommended it to me. I watched it in two to three days. It was just overall really, really good. The wind clawed at my window all night long. An endless song weaved from all sorts of voices. Shrill, gentle, sneery, twined at the air. They were shouting and laughing and arguing about something. Someone was running through the snow while casting long shadows that would occasionally creep close to my bed. Our house had a mine of its own, the creaky old mine of a building that had seen a lot in its days and was seemingly trying to share its wisdom with the inhabitants. The lonely house faced the forest and the dark green thicket gaze backed with its hollow eyes, rustling, whizzing, swaying back and forth. One could come out and stand at the edge of the forest to reassure themselves. There was nobody behind the crooked trees. Fuzzy silhouettes swinging in the wind couldn't possibly do any harm. It's just a play of light and shadow. Just a play. I knew it was just my imagination. I was already 12 after all. Still... There was a fox! Or maybe it was a raccoon. A creature of sorts there. Oh. Hey, put away your book. How many times have I told you not to read at the table? It's bad for your health. Look at how you slouched you are. Oh. Oh, I guess this is me? This must be sister. Oh, wow. Very nice. This game feels beautiful. I didn't protect and put the book about Conan the Barbarian aside. Protest. I was stuck on a line I couldn't understand after reading it three times anyway. Alia had already finished her breakfast and was munching of some cookies. She was so enthusiastic, she almost looked like your typical girl from commercials. You're not going anywhere until you finish all of it. I, on the other hand, was still trying to drill a hole in the plate of with my eyes, as if it would make the porridge disappear. Hazy anxiousness welled up inside, all because of the previous sleepless night, the black forest around our house and the gloomy wind. The longer I waited, the colder the lumpy white substance became. It looked like a jellyfish from a Corto Odyssey. I love that show. I wonder how horrifying the bottom of the ocean is, or how cold the black forest is at night. The spoon fell out of my hand. Mom showered me with a cold glare from her green eyes. What did I just say? I'll get it. I had 10 seconds to catch my breath before battling the nasty porridge once again. I felt around for the spoon. What is this? Carved on the other side of the table. Carina. Huh, that's my mom's name. I guess she carved it when out with something pointy when she was little. She was a rascal, damaging the furniture like that. She would scold me for a week if I did something similar, though. Should I remind her about it? No, she's been in a bit of a bad mood lately. I imagine her being my age sitting under this table. I wonder was mom afraid of the dark back then? Or the sounds coming from the attic? Or the thick forests? I imagined my grandma coming into my little mom's room, sitting at the edge of her bed where Olia sleeps nowadays, and saying this is in her soft, smooth voice. Taiga is a special place, little girl. It's watching you closely, sniffing you out, trying to discern what kind of beast you are. If you're a good sort, it won't abandon you in times of trouble. But if you're a bad apple, it'll grab you by the side and drag you under the ground. And that would be it. Grandma was caring. She never fought with anybody. Never yelled, never swore. Those were the times without the maddening screams until late at night without smashed dishes and mutual accusations. Our parents used to love each other back then. I remember listening in on one of their conversations by chance. They were talking about Grandma getting prepared for her funeral. She had already bought a casket, and she called it her cute funeral box. 
It waited for its time in the closet, patiently. It was black, a hupstered, with meat-colored material on the inside. I saw it when my grandma was getting buried. When my grandma was getting buried. The house didn't change since the time she was alive. Only all of the photos were gone. Glass-covered pictures with gray faces of my ancestors. They all had a dead but watchful look in their eyes. I crawled out from under the table. Alia yeah, was done with her cookies and was looking at my chair like a sly woodland critter. I turned my gaze towards the frosted window. There were a lot of dark pines outside, but they didn't grab my attention. The pattern of frost formed a picture on the glass. Alia, yeah, look, it's a fox. Where? It looked almost like those optical illusion thingies they put on the back of student notebooks. A mixture of lines at first glance, but if you blur your vision a little bit and look under a certain angle, not outside, on the window. Look, here's the nose, and here's, hey, eat up. Yes, yes, just a moment. I don't see anything. Hurry up, there's not much left. Ah, there it is, but it still doesn't look like one, and I'm telling you, it does. Nuh-uh, it does. Stop it, these kids, I swear. <laughs> Mom hates us. No, I couldn't see the fox either. It disappeared. Went away. Only the frosty pattern similar to stretched out nettle leaves kept creeping up the glass. <laughs> My dad entered the kitchen with long measured steps. I want to have a beard like his when I grow up. Mom would always ask jokingly, Come on, shame it off, it stings. <laughs> this was so long ago. Nowadays, rumbling, rumbling doors and witty comebacks were an everyday occurrence. Oh yeah, always covered her ears whenever she hears something like, What's the point in all this? through the wall. It's all for your sake, Dad would reply, for sake of our family. I always caught every sound in fear of hearing the most dreaded, the deadliest word that started with a D. Okay, I <laughs> had something else in mind. D-I-V-O. Devo? I don't even want to finish it. It was scary to imagine that me and my little sister could be torn apart and taken into different families. Divided? Anyway, your fox is nothing. I have an owl in my window. You and your owl talk again. You said you believed me just yesterday. Have anybody seen my car keys? <laughs> Quick change in subject. I remember leaving them on the windowsill, right? Maybe you did and maybe not. You're a grown man, a father or two, and still. Karina, please stop. Just let me get ready in peace. Your keys are in the basket near the phone. Well, thank you very much. Anton, stop making a martyr out of yourself and finish eating already. In the owl, there was no owl. Damn. But there was one. It had giant glowing eyes. Aya sprung up from the chair and placed her hands on her little face, imitating a pair of eyes with her fingers the size of an apple each. <laughs> Last year you had bye bye in your closet, and now this owl? B but I saw it. Aya shifted her gaze back and forth from dad to mom to me, but couldn't find any support. Have you thought about befriending it? You know, like feeding it with imaginary mice. Don't bully a girl. Well, wow, that's just mean. She's just afraid to sleep alone because she's still little. Only I powdered her lips in rebellion and rushed into the hallway. The staircase that fled to the second floor creaked. Mom gave dad a strict look. Seriously, dude, that was mess up. Oh, that look in her eyes. It's so uncomfortable to be pinned under it. Dad just snorted in reply and left, ringing with the keys he just found. <laughs> Does not care. A minute had passed and the theme song from The Little Mermaid echoed through the house. So random. It was stored on an incredibly worn out cassette tape, which dad already had to glue together once. It's so easy to fix objects by gluing them back together, for example. But how do you fix a relationship? Mom moved to the living room and I was left alone, anxiously stealing glances at the window. You can't fix your parents' relationship. It's only up to them. You can tell the dad that he's a douche though. Alia had trouble sleeping ever since we moved to this house. She would toss and turn or curl up into a ball under her blanket. Sometimes she would jump up in the middle of the night and turn on the VCR. Cartoons helped to take her mind off the troubles we had with the move within our parents. 
oh god, there's a monster in the house. And then Alia said she saw that giant flying monster outside her window. Aw, oh, man, she became obsessed with it. Is that the owl? Our parents did everything in their power. They tried even every little trick to get rid of those ridiculous fears. Alia refused to sleep alone and didn't believe that the owl was just one of her nightmares. After tonight, I was unsure what to make of my sister's words, what to think of it myself. Can nightmares be infectious? Just last night, I couldn't get a wink of sleep and ended up thinking of what to expect in my new school. There were a couple of days left before the beginning of a new term. My imagination drew long twisting hallways that led to a class full of kids. But all the students behind their desks were simply dark figures, cut out using a template. Circular holes gaped in the middle of their faces and pairs of eyes blinked inside the holes. It was as if soon some completely different creatures were looking at me from behind the flat black silhouettes. Their cruel glares filled with icy snares made me shiver from head to toe. Will I survive here? Won't they gang up on me and beat me down? Stomp on me with their bloodiest shoes? Those damn school can burn for all I care. I just wish for anything to happen to it. Doesn't really matter what. I didn't want to go there that badly. I didn't want to see people who are just itching to smack me on the head, trip me up. Think of a new offensive name for me. It's worse than the previous one. I felt like the glasses I wore made me an outsider or some sort of a monster. My gaze slid across the drawings hanging on the walls. I couldn't consider myself a great artist, but Alia begged me to hang them. Drawing was the only thing that made me happy as of late. The small circle of friends I had also enjoyed my paintings, and they promised to call me from time to time. Sometimes I imagined mom picking up the phone and saying in a cold voice, You've got the wrong number, or Anton is not around. Anton is not around. I imagined my future classmate lying in their beds just like me, listening to the howls of invisible werewolves outside their windows. Maybe my new classmates will like me after all. But who would ever like a boy with thick glasses? I mean, my dad used to wear glasses when he was little, and now he's married to the most beautiful woman on the planet, my mom. <laughs> Interesting. The house creaked, pressed by the window. The condo we used to live in, a nine-floor concrete building, buzzed with a neighbor's drill, mumbled with a TV set from behind the wall, cried like a baby from the big family next door. I'm not saying that I find it weird that the son thinks his mother is beautiful. It's just weird that he called her beautiful and thought she was beautiful. Never mind. <laughs> Our current house, though I can't really call it new, was completely different. It was silent and easy going during the day. The shadows lay dormant in the corner on the closest cobwebs and under the stairs. But they all woke up during the night. Something was watching me from every corner. Almost as if the photos of my diseased family with their ashen eyes were hanging on the walls in place of my drawings. The floor was squeaking. Rusty drains were moaning. The attic was occupied by noisy drafts. Well, I could think the house was performing some sort of demonic melody. And then I realized I was, in fact, hearing music. It was already playing for a good while. Somewhere at the edge of my perception, I could hear a flute. It was mixed in with the sound of the wind, of the creaking old house in my thoughts too. I stood up and rushed to the window. I wanted to reassure myself that this music was nothing more than a product of my imagination. It's not like someone is playing it there amidst the cold snowy night, right? Ooh. <gasps> Animals are dancing! Someone was dancing in the field. Black silhouettes I could barely make out. With the dark forest as their backdrop, they jumped around, basked in moonlight, bumped into piles of snow, rolled around and crawled on all fours. Stories about wolves playing under the moon came to mind, but these were clearly not wolves. They stood upright at times, circled around holding hands and whipping up snow, disappearing into the shadows for a brief moment and then coming back. Something bizarre was going on. Shadows dancing in the starless abyss made my imagination go wild, making me anxious at the same time. Suddenly, the music had stopped. The dancing shadows froze in place and, I could swear, pierced me with their eyes. One of the silhouettes immediately parted from the bizarre shadow. 
Carnivo and sprinted across the field with giant leaps. Oh! It glided on squeaky snow without leaving any prints until it was devoured by the pitch black shadow of my house, which became even darker and thicker. My heart was jumping around like the bird inside a cage. I shot the curtains with a swift motion and a step back towards the bed. They saw me. A freezing torrent of fear washed over me. I stood in the middle of a perfectly dark room and listened to some unwanted gas move and scrape around looking for an entrance. The sound moved to the right, then circled around the house. Now my guest should be at the front door. I jumped into the bed and covered myself with a blanket as if it could protect me. The shackles of fear locked my muscles. I remembered the funeral, my grandma lying there, hands crossed on her chest, her facial features sharp like that of a tin doll. Ants running up and down the legs of chairs I held my grandma's casket. I imagined those little creatures climbing up her head and pulling up her eyelids with their tiny legs. Then, her wrinkly eyeballs were once again move inside their sockets and she'd be able to see her grandchildren. I was chanting the spell she taught me through the whole procedure, and now lying under the blanket and listening to squeaks and howls, I was repeating the same words. On the island of Buyan, underneath a blemished sun, and the sea of color blue stands a cabin made of wood. There lay lard and ashen hair for the spawn for sh devil's lair to feast and always leave alone God's faithful servant named Anton. Evil leave this house must ashes to ashes, dust to dust, bizarre sounds had disappeared. I consciously peeked out from under the blanket and saw curtains waving around like a hangman. And then the night doused me with a new portion of boiling terror. The sound scratched at my eardrums. In reality, something or someone was scratching at the front door, hurriedly crawling, clawing at wood, demanding to be let in. The door was shut. Dad had become very cautious recently, so he installed a sturdy lock. I remember him staring at the forest intently as if he was looking for someone. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. I hugged my knees, placing my chin between them, and drilled the door with my eyes. It was so flimsy, a week before the might of darkness. And then... Ooh, the doorknob twitched slightly. Then it turned halfway. Once. Twice. As if the person who tried to enter had no hands. The doorknob tilted once more. And then... Started clicking. Violently, my jaw cramped for fear. My wet fingers clutched the blanket. The door creaked and opened. The wind taunted me, moaning inside the tin drains. Now, now you'll see. The door was wide open. The darkness right inside a carnivorous mouth of a doorway. Tony. Tony. It was as if the night itself was called out to me, flapping its black wings and squeaking with rusty hinges. I was trembling and snared by the web of darkness that hung in the corners of my room, waiting for the one who weaved it to come out of the gaping black hole. Tony! Tony! My abdomen tightened and my chest rose up, ready to exhale a desperate scream. But before I was able to do anything, the darkness asked me, Tony, you asleep? <laughs> I knew it. My sister's pale face protruded from the thick shadows. I almost screamed from relief. God damn it, sister, what the heck were you doing? Tony! T -t Tony! Tony, you asleep? <laughs> Alia? I'm not sleeping. Did something happen? Alia frowned and stuck out her lower lip, a clear sign that she was about to cry. It's there again, staring at me. Shoo her away, Tony, please. I'm so scared. The fear that was tormenting me just a minute ago crawled away and hid somewhere in my stomach. I needed to calm Aaliyah down. It was just a dream, silly. Don't be scared. Dreams don't bite. No one's going to harm you. Aaliyah sobbed. She was trying her best to believe me, but was I sure myself? I have an idea. Let's go to your room and watch the video. Sleeping Beauty, for example. You like that cartoon, don't you? Why does a sleeping beauty have a prince and I have this scary bird? That question took me by surprise. Alright, let's watch Cinderella. My thoughts became tangled, fuzzy. What was that? 
What study me with its eyes while dancing feverishly under the moon? The darkness was clinging to the window, and it couldn't be fooled by Grandma's old chants. It couldn't be satisfied with a feast of lard and long ashen hair. Tony, you coming? Yes, yes, uh, just a moment. Oh, Jesus, man. Oh, oh, what the heck was that? That could not have been real. How did he get in? Why was he so offended that I was watching him dance? I was like, come on, man. Come on, man. I'm just picking you from a distance. Why are you so offended? That's why I didn't want to laugh at Alia and her owl in the morning. But it was clearly just a dream, silly Anton. Nothing more to worry about. Who could be visiting us here in the middle of nowhere? We don't know anyone around here. Oh, they live in the middle of nowhere. Use this bank! <laughs> Crazy cowardly dog. So persistent. I felt extremely unsettling just from a silly thought that our morning guests could have come from the woods. I could barely hear voices coming from the front door. My mind was urging me to hide. In the closet, under the table, behind the curtains, where Olia always hides. Tony, come here! I felt like kettleballs were tied to my feet, but still dragged them towards the hallway. A couple of policemen towered over me in the doorway. They smelled like frost and worry. My mom always winced and grumbled the moment she saw patrol cars, worse than bandits. At the moment though, she looked somewhat confused. Hello? The senior officer, who wore a grim expression, nodded. A bad, a boy had gone missing yesterday. His name's Vova. Look at this, please. Have you seen him? The policeman held out a photograph to me. Nope. Never seen him in my life before. There was a ginger boy around the age of elementary school, a picture with a wall carpet as a backdrop. He had a striped cat in his hands and wore a wide smile. No, I haven't. Are you sure? Look closely. Where would I see him? I don't know anyone around here. I barely leave the house. Well, maybe you've seen him from the window. That's right, your windows always look straight at the forest, don't they? The window. No, I haven't seen anything. I see. He sounded tired by his eyes. His stare as long and heavy was full of suspicion. So was that a dream? Or was it real? I'm pretty sure it was a dream. I squirmed unwittingly under the weight of guilt which his giant shadow cast over me. The policeman finally tore his eyes from me and glanced over the hallway, the stairway, and the cracks in the ceiling, which I haven't noticed before for some reason. How do you like your new place, by the way? Getting used to it? Bit by bit, it's just our little daughter misses the city a lot. Misses the city, huh? How the locals been treating you well? Yes, everything's alright, thank you. The policeman pierced through me one more time with his gray eyes. My head started spinning. Um... Can I help you somehow? I asked that in a shaky voice to look like a police polite boy and to end this unpleasant conversation sooner. Now that I think about it, you look just like one of my nephews, little fella. He's a witty boy around your age, wears the same type of goggles. <laughs> Always engrossed in reading those mystery novels. <laughs> Mom getting after me. <laughs> Told me he wants to enroll in a police school when his family visited this summer. Wanted to help other people, just like me, see? I felt uncomfortable as if a distant relative and another police officer stood before me. You know what? Little boys like you should stay at home, stay away from trouble. The times have changed so much. Mom interjected in a cold voice. You don't say. Wow, why is Mom such a jerk? Ah, uh, well then. What grade are you in, Tony boy? Six? Have you made any friends here so far? Not yet. I'll be going to school for the first time after the break. And then I'll leave you my number just in case. Call me if you have any info. <laughs> yeah, give the kids your number. That's that's not weird. Mom just standing right above them. It's like, <laughs> what's this, by the way? Can you see my mouse? Okay, cool. That's like a toy. I like how it has these little Easter egg stuff all around the images. I don't know if you guys know it's dumb yet, but I, I, I sort of have been. The policemen were gone along with their shadows, the smell of cheap cologne in a photo of a smiling boy. His face still stood before my eyes. I wonder what it was like for him, being all alone there. 
For some reason, I thought of the forest swing in the wind. What did his poor parents feel? And what would my parents do if I had gone missing? Would they cry and thrash about hysterically? Or would they accuse each other like they always do and forget about me eventually? Mom, this Vova, did he go missing in our forest? Seems like it, poor child. I looked out the window at the road. The police UAZ drove off towards the village. The officer's nephew came to mind when I was splitting off old paint from the windowsill. I remembered all the teenage mystery novels from the Black Kitty series I read this summer. Your average boys and girls investigated all sorts of mysteries there. They looked for clues, spied in suspicious people, and after a set of amazing adventures, BAM! Solved in any complicated case. They became local celebrities and must have made their parents very proud. I know it's a trail of policemen's footprints that led to the forest. And then it clicked in my head. Why don't I start an investigation of my own? Maybe I'll find that lost boy. And I'll get a reward. Olya will be so happy. And not only Olya, mom and dad too. Maybe they'll even forget about their quarrels for a while. Maybe I'll even save us from the D word. Douche. <laughs> Delinquent. dead <laughs> i don't know what it is it fantasize i fantasize about buying olia tamagotchi and getting a cassette player and a bunch of takes for myself and a whole box of kin kinder kinder surprise kinder surprise what was the last time our parents bought us any toys that's autumn i think my dad had lost his job at the time there's that annoying song about it had little to no idea what was the accountant's job like they count money, I think. Neighbors used to envy us, but nowadays mom and dad barely had money to afford sweets, and dad would always divide a single chocolate bar between me and Alia. Sometimes I gave her my shares too. No matter how much I wanted to eat sweets, she was still just a pipe squeak. Pip squeak. I couldn't wait to go out looking for clues. I'm going out. Yeah, right. You want the police to go around with your photograph next? The forest is so thick. What if the boy got snatched up by wild animals? Or something even worse? Even worse echoed through the hallway. Even worse. Even worse. Even worse. Even worse. Even worse. <laughs> I won't go far. I'll stay away from the forest. Did you hear what I said? Or should I repeat myself? Better go pack your school bag or play with Alia. The sound of splashing water came from the kitchen. It meant that the argument was over and mom had the last word. Ooh, now I could do stuff. Wow. I'm damn curious what's inside here. I wonder if Harry Potter lives there. <laughs> That's where he lives. <laughs> I want to go out. Let's be delinquents. Who cares if it's the worst ending? We gotta see, you know. But I, I gotta see if there's any other stuff. The dark, stuffy closet. Mom says it smells like mice, but how would she know how, how their, their smells? She hates when I stick my nose in there. She's afraid I'll cut myself on the freshly sharpened axe. I'm sure you're smart enough, kid, not to do that to, to a place, <laughs> to an axe. And Alia can't even be lured close to it. She thinks Babai is living there. I tried to help her fight her fierce ones. I opened the door and turned on a dim lamp so she would see. There was nothing but cobwebs, dad's tools and scratched walls. She still didn't believe me. And I like to hide in a closet and listen to all the account outside. One, two, three, better hide for me. And I dragged her feet on the creaking floorboards, hoping that she wouldn't need to look for me in the cramped monster's den. Okay, see what happens if I open it again. Anton, get your ass out of the closet immediately. <laughs> okay. I guess I could do multiple things, huh? This is nice. This is what I was hoping for in the beginning. But, all part of the story building, I guess. Grandma kept ice cream for me and all the other there. But now, I could only see meat spits for soup and clumped together palmini. I grew to hate them already. Ah, uh, I see. Sounds unattractive to you. 
Meat bits for soup in a pack of pelmini. I don't even know what pelmini is. Never had that in my life. But I like that you have pickles. What's up with this pickle? This thing is crazy. It's probably not even pickles. It must be something else. Kind of just seeing what's all around here. See if there's any like little Easter eggs and stuff. Can I talk to mom? Oh, I could look at this for some reason. I took a peek at mom's crossword. She would get very angry when someone gave her advice. So me and dad faked knowing the answer and being able to reveal it all the time. So basically, she sucks at it. I smile at that fleeting thought. Vertigo, nine letters. The name of the Philistine deity that protected them from viper bites. It had a nickname, the Lord of the Flies. Second letter is E. Hmm. Oh, I thought I had to solve it myself. Hey, Mom. It was difficult to lie to Mom, but there was no other way for me to run away from home. Mom, something's wrong with the TV. The picture is dim and there are stripes all over the screen. Mom's face became visibly distorted. <laughs> ah, you're killing me here. So have you had enough of shooting those stupid ducks now? Told you the can scope will go dim because of your console. Where will we find a TV technician in this hole, huh? Maybe it's just the settings? Please, go see for yourself. Strange. It worked fine in the morning. Maybe the snowfall caused it. Mom rubbed her hands clean on her apron and went to Elia's room. Oh, Alright, later, Mom. <sighs> Emercom of Russia has declared the state of emergency due to adverse weather conditions. According to the weather forecast, a cyclone is moving towards a region. Expect heavy snowfall blizzards and snowdrifts on the road. Keep your eyes open and take care of yourself. Oh, I'll probably just leave that off. I wonder if I do this enough times, it will change. And I'll be like, ooh, I solved it. Okay, I guess not. I have no idea what it is, by the way. The decrepit and stained covered calendar was once my favorite form of entertainment in Grandma's house. I remember waking up and running to the kitchen so I could tear off yesterday's leaf first thing in the morning. As if the coming day would get lost in the taiga forest without my help. One day closer to New Year's, one day closer to Grandma's funeral. I haven't touched this calendar for years now. Since the time they started writing dark and spooky death chants, that only made me gloomy inside of funny proverbs and superstitions, to be exact. Wow, that's weird. I grabbed a dusty counter leaf with caution, and it tore off effortlessly. Sadly, the spooky description from my childhood was still there. Seven horses carried a log, if seven can't carry, bring the eighth from a fairy. They will take it away and never come back. This is the fate the log cannot escape. I crumbled the gray leaf and threw it into the waste bin, hoping to get rid of the anxiousness that washed over me. It was spreading inside me like an ink, ink stain on blotting paper. Tear off the next one. I won't touch it ever again. Fine. Can't do anything to the window. How about these chairs? Dang, that's sexy chairs. I agree. Let's look at it one more time. Make fun of it. Okay. That was nice. <laughs> oh, wait. I could probably click other things inside the... Uh, no? Okay, I guess not. Wow, their kitchen is so empty. Like, wow. What's this eye? Ah. Uh. Huh? Is it like hint? <laughs> That's so adorable! Wow. I don't know what that was about, but it was cute. I don't know what this button does. I can't tell if it's like hint. Oh, oh senior lieutenant Tikonov. I think that's Daddyo or something. I got an achievement. I wasn't fast enough to look at and see what it was. All right, stop it. Oh, this was one that still has an eyeball on it, so it, it kind of tells me that it must be important. Oh no, I guess that's just to say what's interactable, huh? 
Mom's peg toy, a family relic. My mom played with it when she was little, then she gifted it to me. Aliyah was next in the succession line, the toy belonged to her now. She stared at the dancing spindle as if it could show her something. A fairy tale or maybe even our future. Now even my little sister was a bit too old for the old squeaky peg toy top. Eh, yeah, okay. Hey, mom's no longer around. God damn it! <laughs> I was so close! <laughs> This cross had seen so many people come and go in the house. It was black as if it absorbed all human sins from the long years it was hanging under the ceiling. Excuse me. At the grandma died, mom was going to take it off and hang a horseshoe in its place as a lucky charm. But she cut herself with the cross sharp corner and almost fell from that step ladder. An hour since then, she became a total mean lady. <laughs> <laughs> Dad called it a sign from above in order the cross to be left alone in its rightful place. A black cross. Alia's toy. My parents prohibit me from making long distance calls, but from time to time I really want to hear all my old friends. Sometimes I would just pick up the phone and listen to the low hum of the zoomer and <laughs> the distant crackling. Imagining the wind howling in the ice leading car chords. <laughs> when it said Zoomer, I thought they were like Boomer Generation Z and then Zoomers. <laughs> Millennials. <laughs> I meant. Uh, that's funny. Anton, get your hands off the phone. How do you know, Mom? Why are you spying on me? You got cameras up in here? In a place where that technology has not evolved yet to yet? I opened the front gate and went into the field, carefully so mom wouldn't see me from the window. When I crossed half of the distance towards the forest, the snow piles became as high as my knees. I remember my nightly fears. I saw those silhouettes around here. They were jumping around, hiding, holding hands. That hypnotizing music started playing in my head all on its own. In the light of day, those distant figures felt like a simple dream. The sun turned my nightmares to ash, but the aftertaste was still there. Distant ringing in my ears, distorted shadows crawling on the snow alongside me. In a barely audible whisper in my head, blurry and almost kind, everything was silent. So silent I felt like the world was totally empty. No ground, no sky, no parents, no Aliyah. The time reached its limit, a one-way trip that ended at the forest tiny piney stockade. <laughs> Sometimes silence was much scarier than any scream. Our parents would scream at each other while arguing. Both me and Alia turned to stone listening to them. But then always came the ringing silence. Our apartment became numb a couple of days before we departed. It was hard to remember the last time mom and dad joked around, laughing or spent time together. Almost like all of it was in a previous life. When they kissed with Alia present, she always frowned and snorted in a funny way. <laughs> <laughs> but one day it all changed. Something important had left our home. And something scary filled in the remaining void. It was as if a fire broke up and our parents were hurriedly packing our belongings, trying to save themselves and us. From who though? From the people who had dead cold eyes? who sometimes visited us in our previous homes. The eyes that only saw balls of worms on the black ground and everything. And somewhere far away, a siren was going off, trying to warn us of the coming menace. I shuddered, chasing away my delusions, and looked around. There were only me, this white field, and the wind that was whipping up icy dust and belts of powdered snow. I squinted from the sun and turned my eyes to the sunless forest. It looked especially dark in contrast with the blinding whiteness. Knobby tree roots slithered under the snow like fat snakes. Rotten leaves and coniferous needles froze into the ice. Oh man, he's gonna be dead. Dry prickly branches intertwined, bringing up uncomfortable thoughts from about fences. Were they protecting the forest? Or were they keeping something from breaking out? Some objects were hanging from one of the pointy branches. Yes, yeah, called a glove. The glove of the missing boy! Or someone else who died! I tried to get closer, drowning in snow. And when I almost got to the edge of the forest, I saw a knitted mitten. It looked like a wounded bird among the hungering semi-dark. Oh. Should I take it to the police? 
Their senior officer looked gloomy, but he still reminded me of Captain Casanova from my favorite TV show called The Streets of Broken Lights. He was also always anxious with a tired look in his eyes, but still brave and strong. Will this man help me f help them find the lost boy? Vova! I heard a distant shout. Looked like it came from the river. Vova! As if the trees were calling out to someone. Vova! Resounded closer to me. Someone was standing there behind the trees, hiding. Vova! I knew someone was looking for the, for the last lost boy, but still, something was unsettling about that figure. Its stillness, how it was bent unnaturally towards the ground. Its blackness. I don't see anyone. There's no one there. Just branches and roots. It's all just my imagination. A nearby bird flapped its wings loudly. Oh, there it was. A shadow split from the trees and disappeared from my sight. I looked away for just a moment, but when I turned my gaze back to the same place, it was gone. So, it was my imagination after all. Silence reigned for a painfully long time. <laughs> my muscles were tightly sprung, my heart was beating somewhere in my throat. Any noise, any little movement, any small whisper from the thicket and I sprint. But nothing of the sorts happened. I looked at the mitten once more. Ah! 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 I'm getting kidnapped, baby! I need that mitten! I decided to take the lonely mitten from the branch. Oh! Oh, I'm gonna get jumped! I'm getting jumped! Vova! Ah! Ah! A shout rumbled across the field and dissolved into the distance. No echo, no hope for a reply. I'm getting jump. What are you doing? Shadow people. They're all over the place. Oh, uh, oh. Uh. It didn't budge. I pulled harder. The branch cracked and the minute tore off. Landing in my hand with a squishy sound. Squishy. Oh, too heavy. Wet. I squeezed it without taking and something dark spilled from it. Forming a tiny stream between the mint and the snow. Steam rose from the snow pile. Blood. I froze in place, studying the palms in disgust. Red. The sound of crackling branches invaded the silence. Dude, weren't you wearing gloves? I didn't have to think twice before running away. Someone was chasing me from the darkness, breaking pine tree branches, closing the distance with giant leaps. Snow was slowing me down. Crazy thoughts flew through my mind. I'll get caught. They'll get me. I'll get dragged into the thicket. I'll be gone forever. But there was one more voice, probably one for Friedson. It gave me strength, spurred me on. You can't do it. Don't stop. Oh, you can do it. I heard an animal roar behind me. It was so loud my ears went numb. It felt like the sound had come from a pack of hungry beasts rather than a single one. Their nostrils Sucked in freezing air, they sensed my fear. Two giant flings flapped above my head. An enormous shadow flew over, declaring a hoot, a wheeze. The roars were coming from all directions now. From the dried up raspberry bush, from twisted pines, from under the windfall. Hurry, run, don't look back. It felt like I was inside a nightmare. The snowy clearing became vicious like quicksand. I was stuck in place. I pulled my leg from the mushy, mushy trap just to be caught in a new one, even deeper than before. I continued to drown, sinking deeper and deeper with every desperate push. Was snow ever the sticky? I screamed in horror after realizing this wasn't snow. So I wondered something in a snow pile was clutching my pants. I gathered all my strength and rushed forward. The pressure on my leg was gone. My boots slipped out of the hole and my soul was on a hard surface again. I reached a clear path for one jump and from there ran to my house. It's gloomy facade and didn't look threatening now. The house was my line of defense from the shadows that flapped their wings and the creatures that were hidden under the snow. I tripped over the doorstep and smashed into the door. All in my hurry, I still managed to notice the claw marks, as if a dog was striking the wood with its paws, demanding to be let in so it could escape the cold. I hadn't noticed these marks when I was leaving. The heartbeat in my ears were much louder than my surroundings. I couldn't hear whether someone was following me or not. What if they were already in our front yard and mom had locked the door? Drowning in fear, I pulled on a doorknob and it obediently gave way. 
I rode into the hallway and shut the door behind me. Porch planks cracked as my pursuers ascended the stairs. Pursuers ascended the stairs? Like, the pursuers went upstairs? My fingers slipped off the lock and I couldn't click it into place. I gritted my teeth and pulled hard on the iron knob, whipping it between the boards. I stared blankly at the door. Someone was standing on the other side of the pitiful, flimsy bearer that was probably less useful than blankets. Wheezing breath reached into the house and crashed at me in waves. It smelled of pine and sweat. Mom peeked out of the kitchen and chastised me with the same frigid voice she always used when talking to Dad. What exactly didn't you understand? What exactly you didn't understand when I told you to never slam the door? I, I, I didn't mean to. I snuck a glance at the door. The smell was gone, and the breath was too. If there was someone in the first place, of course. Here, mere five meters away from Mom, my fear was slowly weakening, melting like snow in spring, and with it the last bit of strength I had left in my body too. My legs gave way. I promised myself, I propped myself up against the wall so I wouldn't fall over. Bob's expression had changed immediately. Oh, she is actually worried. The cold mass of strictness and detachment was gone. Mom looked the same as before, all those quarrels. She finally saw my condition, my wet pants plastered with snow. Where have you been? What did I tell you, huh? I told you to stay home. Am I nothing to you? I got afraid she would cry. I reached out to her like I was very little and wanted to cuddle me. But Mom regained her composure fast and put on her usual face. Her eyes shined like steel. Her voice rang out. Your dad can't find his cigarettes. Be honest, did you snatch them? Were you smoking a cigarette? I th uh, there was someone chasing me. Uh, I, I thought... <laughs> I started as soon as I started explaining myself. I thought you cared about me because <laughs> I was getting chased. Not that you thought I was smoking six. Tears welled up in my eyes. Mom leaned towards me and sniffed my clothes like a beast searching for the smell of tobacco. <laughs> God damn it, Mom. Did she squinted her eyes in suspicion and looked into the front yard. Her expression changed in an instant and she covered her mouth with her hand. Look, over there, at the fence. My heart started thumping as if I became prey once again and my pursuers were following me in the field. I could swear that I've heard something scratch at the door, just like in my nightmare. Mom beckoned me with her finger and I gathered all my remaining bravery to look into the kitchen window facing my fear. Oh dogs. I could barely discern some hairy silhouettes swimming in snow through the icy winter pattern of the glass. Dogs! Just a small pack of strays with no name and owner, barely reminding of the hungry monsters that live on the edge of the forest. Oh boy, were you scared of them? I think they'd rather be scared of you, Anton. They were chasing me, like a bunny. And what if they're rabied? What if they're rab rabid? The smile had slowly disappeared from Mom's face. Now she looked at the dogs as if it was her first time seeing them. What if they attacked Olya? Yeah. Mom? I wish your dad could just shoot them all. Mom, look, they're alive! Huh? What? Are they your friend or foe after all? Make up your mind. You're not a little kid anymore. Mom sighed in annoyance and I felt so bitter that I bit my lower lip and fixed my gaze in the cobweb. Cobweb ridden corner. Man, I just don't understand mom. She's like hot and cold to the extreme. Well, some detective I am. In reality, I wasn't risking my life among monsters, but rather my pants among a pack of stupid strays. And what for? What use do I have for this mitten? Of course! A dark and strict, sticky mitten that belonged to the lost boy made a squishy sound in my hand. Sounds like I was clutching it. Seems like I was clutching it the whole time. It's my trump card as a detective. I hurry to present this clue to my mom. Oh, that's so gross. Mom, look, this is Vova's mitten. That boy the police were asking about in the morning. It stretched and bled. I found it hanging in the tree. I can show where. <laughs> Let's call the police right away, like the officer had told us to. Mom, look. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Disgusting, Anton. A shadow of doubt slowly crept onto Mom's contorted face, as if she was trying to remember something distant, like someone tries to remember their dream, but the ima images slip away. Stop at this moment. Olya will go insane if she hears you. She already has trouble sleeping and whines all the time, and you joke around like this? 
At that moment, I realized the man was actually wet from snow. Oh. <laughs> okay, it's less gross, but damn, this kid. Being all smiley and happy because there were blood on the mitten, so he thought there was no blood whatsoever. He went to sink through the floor for embarrassment. Come here, my boy who cried wolf. Oh, don't just stand there. Come take your pills. A golden colored pill, reminiscent of a dead wasp, fell into my palm. <sighs> I had a feeling. I had a feeling. I already took one during the breakfast. Don't talk over me. I told you to stay home, and you... Dad would have given you a good weapon for that. Come on, take it. Or you won't be able to sleep at night, and you have school tomorrow. So I had to swallow the bitter medication, drinking it down with similarly awful water that gave off a taste of chlorine. Maybe it wasn't Vova's man. Maybe it wasn't a man at all. Just like the forest monsters. And Olias Owl. Am I going mad? What's happening to me? Or the pill had an immediate effect, or my over-exaggerated brain didn't let fear inside anymore. Serenity washed over me, bringing Yanni indifference along with it. Anton, you done. See, you can do it when you try. Take off your coat. Are you asleep? No, Mom, I was just thinking. What about, I wonder? It's just something silly. Mom scrutinized me with suspicious eyes, as if she wasn't sure she was looking at her own son or not some doppelganger that came from the forest. Is everything alright? You had the exact same expression when the policeman asked you about the window. I'm alright, Mom. She heaved a deep sigh. Fine. It seemed like the house had changed. The sofa's fabric had become discolored. Fingerprints appeared on the bathroom tiles. The light bulbs also felt different dimmer and yellower. Even the saliva inside my mouth had a different taste. A melody from Aladdin could be heard from the upper floor. Alia was done rewatching her favorite Little Mermaid episode and switched to the other tapes. I slowly changed into my home clothes, stopped before the sink and studied my reflection in the mirror like I was trying to solve one of those spot the difference puzzles. Then I went upstairs. Jafar's and Lago's voices died down. I walked past Olia's bedroom and slipped into my own. Ooh, stuff to do. So yeah, I kind of had a feeling he had schizophrenia. One of the things I was wondering, just because of how many... Like, because of the whole dream sequence, and I was wondering, how come nothing came about from this? It was a dream, but he's acting like it's real. So that's when I had my first opinion, but I didn't think it would be true, given that this was a horror game, of course. The forest didn't look as grim during the day, and tangled tree branches in the distance and a snowy field between our house and the forest brought sleepiness to my eyes. But sometimes, I would still catch myself looking in the window at the icy treetops instead of doing my homework. How strange, I remember removing this curtain. Hey, it's just a schizophrenia. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I dreamt of becoming an artist since my dad bought me my first comic book. Fly Magazines was the coolest. I especially liked the big space related edition with alien monsters and that fuzzy episode about a gendarme. I started drawing all kinds of stuff since that day and I seem to be getting pretty good at it. One of my letters even got published and Fly once. Maybe someday they'll even publish my comic. My best works. Ah, oh, there it was. My Triceratops figurine. I know about all sorts of dinosaurs. Velociraptors, Afrovenators, Hezelophodonts. I remember going to the movies to see Jurassic Park, back when we still lived in the city and taking pictures with a T-Rex in the hall. It turned its head and roared. It was awesome. And next to it was a Robotech Transformer. <laughs> Very different stuff. I love this cartoon. When Jeff Fighter speeds up in the intro among the sounds of blaster fire, you know your next 20 minutes will surely be amazing. Zentrade, I have no idea how to say it, Space Station is captured. Rick, get ready for battle. I actually did watch Robotech, though I was also very, very young to really understand the story and was more interested in the Whoa, that's so cool! <laughs> it makes me, it gives me the feeling that this guy is like me, my age. And this was just set back in the 2000s or early 2000s. So it's kind of neat. Oh, dude, what are you doing back there? How strange, I remember moving this curtain. 
You got any comment about her being right there? I guess you just don't know yet, huh? Monsters, Ghosts, UFOs, the Encyclopedia of Paranormal Phenomenon from Ross Man Publishing. I've learned about the Loch Ness Monster, Medusa Gorgon, and Bigfoot from there. Alia is always scared of the books. She could barely handle sifting through the monster and alien sections with me, but the middle part where they start to talk about ghosts really freaked her out. I even remember hunting ghosts after I read, read that book. I measured the distance between items on my table every evening and checked if they moved to some supernatural force come the morning. They didn't, but to be honest, what was I expecting? To meet Casper the ghost? I know this book by heart. One of the drawers were empty. I hit the policeman's phone number along with the minute in there. Run for your life! Achievement unlocked! This simple action drained the last bit of strength from me. Oh. That was what was from the refrigerator. I sat on the bed. And only then I noticed there was someone behind the curtains. Come on, game! Don't be silly, it's the sister! I tired hand dropped to the sheets. Whether it was due to medication I took or the stress I underwent, the room began to contort as if the wind was blowing the walls out like a pair of sails. The room's corners bent and undulated. The only stable thing in the whole room was the figure between the windowsill and the curtains. A flimsy piece of cloth was stuck to my hidden visitor, just like a savant of sorts. Alia? Who else would be standing there? I stood up and licked my dried up lips. What if it's not sister? Yeah, Alia, it's so funny. The silhouette was unmoving. Wasn't my sister watching movies? Did I see that she was watching movies? It was enveloped softly by the curtains, as if there was a thick layer of darkness there. Not a human being. I reached out the curtains. Boom, boom, beat my heart, controlled by medication. The wings sang in the forest with a chorus of voices. For a second, I wanted to return to the bed, just lie down, and watch the person behind the curtain, knowing full well they were looking back at me. They were looking without blinking, wanting for me to fall asleep. Plastic rings rustled against the holder when I pulled open the curtains. Catch ya! <laughs> I knew it was you from the beginning. A blindingly bright halo lit up above Alia's head, with a setting sun as the background. My sister was shining. She was well, she was just a baby. Dad always used to say she was shining with happiness. I always retorted, but Dad, she's not some flashlight. But I brought her to the window one day, and sunlight poured on her smiling face. I felt like I was holding a child woven from light. I saw everything. Oh, well, really? What did, what did you hide? She was just like my mom when she was little. Before she put on her sad mask of tiredness and switched to her commanding tone of voice. It's nothing, just okay. Ran up by to the table, her round eyes and ass. Oh yeah, ran up to the table, round eyes and ass. You stole something and hid it there. Are you a thief? What? Don't be stupid. I didn't steal anything. A clear image came to mind. That man hanging from a treetop branch. What if I did steal it after all? From the forest, from the tilted figure standing behind black trees. Alia could be selfish and stubborn when she wanted. Then show me. Swear that you won't tell anyone, then I'll show you. Alia wore a plotted smile. Plotting smile. I swear on mom's heart. Ooh, that's deep. <laughs> I'll swear on my heart. I'll swear on mom's. <laughs> and off she heard in one of the movies about the pioneers we watched. Don't say things like that. Alia nodded and made a gesture with her head, locking her mouth with an imaginary key. She was filled with curiosity that was splashing in her giant eyes. I opened a drawer and Olya leaned in, holding her breath. I looked, it looked like there was not just a simple mitten, but some sort of exotic critter. Is this someone's mitten? She said that as if she couldn't understand what she saw. A certain boy lost it and got lost himself. Now you understand how dangerous it is for kids to wander in the forest, right? He must be really cold out there. Will they find him? They will. The police are going house to house, showing his photo to everybody. Alia traversed for the room with care and pressed her tiny palm against the window. And why are they going to houses and not the forest? Are they scared? The question caught me off guard. The police aren't scared of anything. Yeah, right, flashed in my mind, cloud of mind. Did they really check every nook and cranny where darkness, cold, and whispers of icy branches dwell? If that's the case, how did they miss this mitten? Or did it appear later? For me. 
I changed the topic. As if trying to get Alia as far away as possible from it for a stick guest. We may get a reward if I go and find this boy by myself. A lot of stuff like in Field of Wonders. Sounds cool, right? Alia wasn't listening to me. She was piercing the forwards with incredibly adult eyes, uncharacteristic for her. What if the owl got him? Nonsense. An owl won't be able to live a human. But you know what? I was picking my words with utmost care. I forced him out of my exact overexerted brain. Stay away from the forest. I think it's... I think it's... How should I put it? It's cursed or something. Just like in a fairy tale? No. Not like that. More like in that spooky tape mom and dad are hiding from us. <laughs> Alia shivering and still glares at the window. Ah, no comments. I saw you running away. Someone was chasing you? No, it's just I was hurrying back home so mom wouldn't be worried. As I looked at my sister, my heart was tearing apart. She was so fragile. It was so easy to stifle her light. A gust of wind in her small fire would be gone. You're lucky. Mom won't even let me go outside. I'm like a princess in the tower. I can't go anywhere. I'll die from boredom here. You're wrong. No one has ever died of boredom. And you have me in your cartoons and mom and dad will be good to each other soon. You know what I wish? we wish for on my next birthday? I wish for mom and dad to turn into children so we could go and play together like we used to. Yeah, and if you make them as small as bugs, we could place them in a little, little box. <laughs> and tugged at my sleeves. Tony, let's go watch Aladdin. Fatigue won over my desire to be with my little sister. I was washed over by some sort of highness uh, apathy. I'm too tired. I don't want to. Come on, it's so boring alone and mom is always busy. We can pick a cartoon you haven't seen before. I know all of her taste by heart at this point. Not all of them. You haven't watched Peter Pan. Remember how you fell asleep in the middle of it? And so much happens after that. Let's go, let's go. Maybe a bit later. Should I tell you how it ends? Let's leave that for tomorrow. I won't tell you tomorrow. I know, let's play hide and seek. No, Alia. Then draw me a dino. Oh yeah, please. Try it, try it. Would you, would you leave me alone already? I blurted it out without thinking, and then I was immediately taken back. I never screamed my little sister like that. Alia stared at me in shock. Her lips started trembling, a precursor of tears. My chest was seething with disgust and embarrassment. What's happening to me? I hurried to prevent Alia from crying. All right, you win. Let's go watch some cartoons for a bit. I don't want to. I came up to her, put my hand on her soft head. Let's go. Let's go watch Peter Pan. Boo! You fall asleep again. I smiled and looked at her again. Her eyes were wet and felt bottomless. I promise I won't. And I'll draw you a full triceratops later. Hooray! Well, that was easy. Tripe sire pops! <laughs> well, close enough. Alia rubbed her eyes with a sleeve of her pajamas, and her shining smile returned to her face. I'll go ask mom for condensed milk and bread, and you rewind the tape. The bread is fresh, just how you like it. Alright, just be careful not to spill the milk, or you'll be yelled at again. Wanna bet I won't spill it? The tape is somewhere to be in a nightstand, somewhere in a nightstand. Look for it. Oh yeah, disappeared into the doorway and I dragged my feet into the neighboring room. Ah, uh, what if I find the naughty tape? <laughs> I mean, the tape that the pirates does not want me to find. Yes, of course. Nothing that has to do with anything naughty. Ha <laughs> ha. The scary window where Alia sees that I curse it out every night, lurking in the dark. Alia keeps curtains open during the day, but as soon as the twilight comes, she shuts them tight so she wouldn't see the pair of hungry eyes outside. No, Al. Just a dark forest. Oh, that was weird. Alia's countless toys. I know teddy bear is the main attraction here. Alia doesn't sleep without it. And she digs her nose into its fur when she sleeps. Oh, it's Alia's room. <laughs> it's just funny. The naughty tape. I mean, the, the tape that parents does not want me to see is here. And she digs her nose into its fur when she sleeps. Dude, this teddy bear is creepy. Why do you do that? Uh, uh. Uh, uh. <laughs> Biggie Bank. Oh, yeah, saving money for a real puppy because Dad said that taking care of him will take a lot of money. Too bad I don't have a coin on me. Oh, that would have been sweet. Slinky. 
We're with you. What else? Yep, yep, yep. Oh, that's it? Alright, let's turn this on. The old photon TV was gathering dust in the corner. All that was left was clicking the button on the front panel. Easy. The two warmed up and familiar white noise started dancing on the black screen. I almost reached out to turn on the VCR when the noise calmed down and a blurry image appeared for a moment. Oh, 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 this is the exact same spot. It was a dark taiga forest. Wait, you can see the fox. You can see the fox. Just like the one outside my window, the picture split the screen in half. Something creepy resembling human speech was coming out of the speaker. Just a few moments later, the scenario was again overshadowed by noise. Oh, you can see the fox here too. <laughs> Maybe I'm just taking things and turning it into a picture though. Did it catch some rogue signal? Local TV station only really shows Soviet cartoons, and even that was pretty rare. And only just recently I used to always watch Robotech before school. It was so awesome. Maybe I should tinker with the antenna. What if I catch this channel again? On the other hand, Alia had asked me to find a tape. It wouldn't be nice to disappoint her, but in my sleepy state, I didn't have the strength to do all of it. Oh jeez. Oh, I could go back to TV. What does this do? Ah, the picture finally cleared up! But the moment I rejoiced at finding that weird signal again, the TV started coughing. A voice barely coming through the cacophony. Sorry. <laughs> he was often seen at the moment when small snowy hills were lined up on the screen, pierced with rackety crosses and a male voice was narrated with a slow, mournful voice. It was the pitch black night at the cemetery. In that fateful dark time, little Senya met her fate at the fates of a monstrous thicket dweller. The locals call him none other than the Forest Master. I froze and did my best not to move, as if by doing that I could scare away the narrator. I listened closely to his every word. The beast dealt with the helpless girl in a masterful planet manner. The camera panned across the snow with something black spilled over it, looking for ragged pieces of cloth that were thrown around all over the place. I didn't want to think whether Senya's remains were wrapped in there, so I shut my eyes without thinking. I thought this was an arm. The voice continued. Wolves are rare guests in these parts. Here's what Tamara, the old woman that lives in a nearby crypt, had to say. A close-up shot of the face of an old homeless woman wary from life and alcohol abuse rattled on the screen. Yes, yes, such a fearsome beastie it is. Worse than the rising dead. The old woman splattered saliva all over the rectangular mic. Oh god, what's happening? In the stink. It's like the rest of her comparison was swallowed up by the sound of a horn. I've never felt anything like that. It was just standing there. Yes, right where you stand, boyo. It pierced me with its eyes right in the middle of day. It was so huge that one with glassy eyes. Obscenities were covered by another beep. You know, they say if this demon lays its eyes on you, it'll snatch you, put you into his bag, and you're done. But he won't touch me, like me, it seems. So they even call me the Devil's French. And it's definitely true. The carnivorous monsters will not touch you, who fell to the level of the forest beasts going for the innocent child's blood instead. The forest master's presence is felt more and more on the outskirts of our country. Turn between believing in what was said and shrugging it off as I record the remaining part of the documentary for some reason. I quickly grabbed the tape that was on top of the TV and put it into the VCR without even looking at the cover. I pressed record, turned the sound up and paid attention to the slipping signal. Oh no, what if I have used up her favorite movie? It's not called the Forest Masters for nothing. All of the four animals obey it, be they hairy or feathery. They're all precursors for its experience. If you hear howls in the distance, then it most likely already knows where you live. If you find animal prints all over your doorsteps and birds watching you from the trees, you better hide. It's already coming for you. And if you wake up at night and see a pair of eyes in your window, then soon. 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 
Ça, 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 The sound of rustling tape reminded me of leaves in the wind and a low howl of the beast. I woke up from a nice stupor and pressed the button. The VCR ejected the tape for a moment. I thought it was stained with saliva. But then was but that was just a light from the chandelier making the black plastic glossy. And then I saw the cover. Oops, I recorded it over Peter Pan. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I get for hurrying. It was bad enough that I ruined all he oh, yeah, has cartoon, but I also put this creepy stuff over it. I can't let her see this. We'll drown in tears. I snuck a glance at the door. I could hear the clatter of glass and the squeaky floorboards. Only appeared in the hallway. <laughs> you had to start without me, have you? Oh no, she got ready with the food. <laughs> My sister brought her tray with unevenly cut bread and a whole can of condensed milk. Um, no. I was looking for the tape. Do you really want to watch Peter Pan? I do, I do. Turn it on already. Mom will come watch her Brazilian drama soon. Come on, think, fake detective. You know, I didn't like Peter Pan. Maybe we should watch Little Mermaid instead. But I've seen it so many times. And you promised me. She's so stubborn. I know. Let's watch a couple of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle episodes first. Deal? <sighs> She put down the tray and crossed her hands on her chest. If you want it so much, can you open the milk can? I'm afraid I'll cut myself with the sharp edges. As soon as I stood up, colorful dots popped up before my eyes, and my sore legs were pierced by thousands of needles. Only when I reached the sofa, I realized that the can was already open. Oh yeah, had tricked me. Played me for a fool. <laughs> Dumped my fingers in the milk. My stomach became heavy. I wanted to rush towards the TV, but my little sister was faster. She picked up the remote and proclaimed in a victorious tone, Gotcha! 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 As the remote's master, I command you to watch Peter Pan! <laughs> I couldn't even open my mouth when the VCR had already eaten the curse taped. She'll play it and then black crosses on unnamed graves, empty crypts, bloody scraps on the snow, and the unseen devil's wench. <laughs> I'd better tell the truth. Oh yeah, stop. I erased the end of your tape by accident. I'll trade it with you for two of mine. What do you mean? You couldn't erase it. Me and Daddy have broken off all those plastic pins with a screwdriver. You can't record anything over my cartoons now. My little sister pressed her triangle play button on her remote. I squeezed on the inside, only the out of this world voice on the narrator. But I saw a duel between Peter Pan and Captain Hook instead. I sighed in relief. My head, heavy as a leaden ball, now rested in my hands. Alia smiled in joy. <laughs> she put the tape on rewind and started spreading milk over her bread. And when the cartoon started, she forgot about everything in the world. As if she really got transported to the Neverland, like she always wished. To be honest, I also imagine myself there, in a land where no one never ages, where one no one argues over little things, where no one listens to fights in the sound of broken plates at night. But now Peter Pan's land was especially far away from me. My thoughts dragged on, stumbled upon the horned beast that awaited me among the trees. The narrator's more for a voice haunted me, sliding over bushes and ravines, like a winged carnivore would track its prey. I'm waiting for like a jump scare in case you guys won't ask it. It felt like I was dreaming with my eyes still open. Then my sister's scream pwned me back to reality. Tony, shut the curtains. Fast. Why? No one's watching you. It's dark, and when it's dark, the owl comes. I, I'm scared. I got out of bed, finding my drowsiness, and closed the curtains. I did my best not to look outside towards the treetops, towards the taiga forest which seemingly drew closer and closer. Of course, it was just a visual effect from shadows of branches scraping the snow. Tony, Mom thinks I made up the owl. And Dad too thinks I'm a liar since I'm small. But the owl exists. Honestly, honestly it does. You do believe me, right? That it comes every night and... And I swiftly grabbed Alia's hand and looked her in the eyes. I was trying to transfer at least some of my courage and determination. But did I really have those qualities? Yes, I believe you are right. 
Just don't nag your parents about it anymore. They're already dealing with a lot, so they'll just get mad at you. Come and tell me if anything happens, and don't look out the window. But it wants me to look. Doesn't matter. Act like it doesn't exist and never existed like it's made up, just like mom and dad says. He'll get tired of waiting and fly away. Oh, I thought I got to click a thing. It was madness, but after everything that's happened recently, I was more and more inclined to believe Elias at all existed. I think it's real. I think it's real. I think they do have uh, schizophrenia, but I also think that this stuff is real. We follow Peter Pan's adventure, adventures as if nothing had happened, as if the forest didn't connect kids, as if our parents weren't tearing each other apart by, bit by bit. Ken Hook was running away from a crocodile and Peter Captain Pan was headed to London on a gilded sailboat. By some miracle, I lasted longer than my little sister. Olya's eyelids had dropped. She started snorting lightly, resting her chin on the side of the bed. The chorus was singing the ending song. The world of Disney was lit up by a silvery moon. Another moon peeked from under the first one, scary and wan, hanging over the taiga forest. The horrific report got recorded right over the credits. Oh, my throat went dry. My pulse became faster. I looked towards Olia. She smacked her lips in her sleep. I squeezed the remote with all my might, ready to press stop any moment. I ran around the recording, checked if it was intact, and then carefully took out the tape. The protective pin was still in place. I stood up and left Alia's room. <gasps> Whether it was by providence or by curse, I hid the tape alongside the mitten at the exact moment Mom peeked into my room. Curse tape achievement unlocked. Enough playing around. It's your first day at school tomorrow. Go to bed. You should sleep properly. You don't want to be teased for being sleepy, right? I don't think everything's so simple, as if sound sleep would ensure my classmates would like me. I covered myself with a blanket up to my neck and listened to the house humming, to something invisible rustling in the corners. My inner voice had a question for me. Do I want to hear that mysterious flute again? Yes or no? Maybe it's just a part of growing up, and I can't fully understand my own desires. The forest wailed behind the barrier that was my walls. Some ethereal entity wandered the fields. Branches shook as if calling for me. The wind howled on and on in the night. My thoughts were like annoying flies that entered my head before becoming weak and tangled. I didn't know this how I fell into slumber. True detective unlocked. Oh. Oh. Wait, what? Thank you for completing episode 1 of Tiny and Bunny. Did you enjoy it? Do you want to know what happens next? We're already working hard on the continuation of the story. Oh. Oh, I, I was hope, hoping and expecting more for an ending, but this is just, it's like a cliffhanger, but low-key cliffhanger. It's its kind of neat. Overall, I think this is a cool game. I, 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 it's very, very, very story-driven, but that's to expect with a visual novel horror game. I kind of did wish that there was more interactions with just point and clicking but then i suppose it would be called a point and click in that case <laughs> anyways what are your thoughts on tiny bunny i still don't know why it's called tiny bunny just yet i think it's supposed to be some s symbolic uh reference to something maybe something in a uh, russian lore i don't really know I, I, I don't know but hey let me know your, your thoughts in the comments down below considering the like button if you enjoyed and i'll see you in the next one till then let's uh...